in 1066 AD William the Conqueror the Duke of Normandy defeated the English king Harold Godwinson and he became the Duke of Normandy as the same time the king of England on 25th of December this is the classical net question that you can confront if you were understanding the previous year's question paper quite well and in the net examination this is the frequently asked questions regarding the history so if you don't know this fact just write the thing down but the question here is why all of a sudden a person from outside obviously william the conqueror also known as william the bastard tried to capture the english throne and also claim that i had the right over the english throne this is quite unprecedented this all mysteries are going to be art in today's lecture if you are new to this channel subscribe to our channel click the like icon and share with your friends you are watching your literary this world. video is not only about dedicated to battle of hastings but at the same time we are going to unearth all the histories which are related to english kingdom first of all it was king claudius the roman emperor who came in england brought with him the ideas the ideologies at the same time the language we confronted the latin influence in english language but when claudius came in england he was not alone he dominated all the minds of the england rather than using force against the english people he was riding on that time an elephant the english people they greeted him as the king as the god claudius on that time was quite aware he was a great tactician that british people did not see one single elephant in their life and they considered cor claudius who was riding an elephant a king a god he did not use one single power in order to conquer all the english people he used ideology when he came in england the first roman emperor who came in england by riding an elephant that elephant for english people it was completely new they did not see one single elephant in their entire life that's the reason claudius was considered as a god to english people that was the first ideological domination that roman people invaded england without using any force after that they conquered all the england but the story was not over then the vikings they were attacking roman people they were attacking they were plundering they tooking if they were tooking every single thing from roman emperor but the story was not over the vikings were coming they were plundering they were looting all the roman empire that's the reason the king on that time who were protecting england they were all to rome the all soldiers they went to roman emperor can you imagine so the english country on that time was completely defenseless people came the roman people came in england and they said to english people that we have nothing to do with you our own country is now distressed we have to protect our own country so our interest is our interest your interest is your interest it is now your responsibility to protect your country and that is the point where anglo saxon and jutes the three germanic tribe conquered england there were two stories that we are having right now Historia Ecclesiastica Gentis Anglorum. Do you know who wrote Historia Ecclesiastica Gentis Anglorum, also known as the Ecclesiastical History of English People? If you know, comment down below that who wrote Historia Ecclesiastica Gentis Anglorum. So in Historia, we have the idea that Angles, Saxons, and Jutes, these three Germanic tribes, came England. But there is another account, the story of Gildas, the great historian. He said that Angles, Saxons, and Jutes, when Roman left England. english people on that time were vulnerable they were exposed to the outside threat that's the reason they invited angles saxons and jutes angles saxons and jutes came in england and the influence of scandinavia began so first we have the latin influence because of the christianity and the rechristianization happened in 597 ad by the archbishop of canterbury st augustine remember this fact it is a key fact the rechristianization happened in 597 ad by st augustine in the net examination you are going to confront these kind of questions so rechristianization happened at the same time we confronted the scandinavian influence the angles saxons and jutes the three different different tribes from different different places obviously they are from germanic tribes they bring their war like tradition their paganism so the pagan gods all are inviting in the english ground the war like tradition that is the reason we have beowul it's talking about the war the heroism the plunder these are all paganic tendencies that we have 
and you can say that Beowulf, the one of the finest work in the old English literature, the epic, it is the fusion of the Christianity as well as from paganism. But on that time, there were seven kingdoms, and Angles, Saxons, and Jews invaded England. They created total seven kingdoms, also known as Heptarchy. H e p t a r c h y. Heptarchy means seven kingdoms, and in those seven kingdoms, West Saxon, the language of Wessex, was one of the dominating culture, and West Saxon language became the language of literature thanks to King Alfred. So Angles, Saxons, and Jews. they were ruling all over the england now this is the story on that time in the french soil the norman person or you can say the scandinavian person the scandinavian ruler rollo i guess you have heard the name if you went for the viking soap series so on that time in the french so the viking ruler rollo came i guess you already know the name of rollo if you have watched vikings Rollo came in order to conquer all the France. On that time, the French king was Charles the Third, and he said to Rollo that there was no point of killing each other. So let's go for a treaty. Let's go for a contract. So Charles the Third invited a new treaty to Rollo that if one of our people died without any heir, H E I R. So if our people died without any heir. you people those who came from german those you are all from viking you have the vikings origin you have the claim over the french throne so rollo and the people those rollo brought with him they had the claim over the french throne and as are pay are paying a respect to rollo rollo became the duke of normandy thanks to charles the 3rd so charles the 3rd made rollo the duke of normandy remember this is a key fact cause If you want to understand the relation between English people and the relation between French people, why they are connected, why they are attacking each other, this understanding is quite important. Rollo from Vikings, he invaded France. He became the Duke of Normandy, and he was also Christianized because he was a pagan person, right? So Charles the Third says that if you want to have a claim over our throne because of the treaty, since we are all living together, you have to change your religion. from paganism to christianity this must be your religion and obviously christianity is considered as the ideal path in england anglo saxons and jews they were also converted to christians but not because of forcefully but they had a sense of you can say belief in their mind the people came from different different you can say those monks came in england and they preached to the kings that if you can follow the christianity you can win any war So as you can say, where the benefits go, so goes the religion. So trans they converted themselves to Christian. So paganism to Christianity. The influence started. Now the problem is that where is the relation? So on that time there was a king known as Ethelred. He was the king of England. Obviously he was not that much of powerful, not that much of dominating. He was a kind of weak, and he was also distressed by the Viking attacks. people were coming the danes people they were coming they were attacking england and he was to an extent becoming more and more weak so what he tried he went to france and there there was a duke known as richard so richard was the duke on that time and he had a connection with rollo so you can say from rollo and roll from rollo there are many people who are coming so richard was related in blood to rollo so rollo was a viking richard was also a viking but now rollo was converted and he is now norman french at the same time richard was also converted he was the norman french so richard had a daughter known as emma these facts are important e m m a so ethelred came to richard and he proposed to marry the daughter of richard richard agreed cause it is the relation now we are forming we have emma from the vikings he had the blood of she had the blood of vikings at the same time she has the claim over the french throne because of the charles the third treaty with rollo now we have ethelred the english person the english bird so emma and ethelred both are now married the french as well as the viking blood and the english blood these three bloods are now completely fused getting my point and after their marriage came edward and edward is the key figure here remember this is quite 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 important edward is the key figure here so edward he has a claim over the france because he is the grandson of the duke of normandy at the same time his father 
is the king of England. So Edward, he is, he, his father is the king of England. His mother is the daughter of the Duke of Normandy. So he is having the like link right now. He is the bridge over the French kingdom at the same time, the English kingdom. Now, can you link the bridge between these two people? That's the reason that they are claiming this and they are claiming this. So Ethelred, Emma and Edward, they are having to an extent a peaceful life but not completely satisfied. All of a sudden, the Danes king, D-A-N-E-S, another Germanic tribe, known as Swain, he came in England and conquered England. Ethelred was defeated as well as overthrown. But Emma, the wife of Ethelred, she was not killed. So Emma was there. After Swain, in 1014, possibly what 1016, the son of Swain came in the throne. C-N-U-T. Nut is a prominent figure also. From Nut and Emma, both of them are now married. So can you imagine? Edward now is completely separated. Edward is alone, completely. She, Emma, the mother of Edward, she was not paying one single attention to Edward. Edward on that time understood that what kind of problem, what kind of danger were looming all over his head. He had no father. His mother is now married to another person, the Danes king, known as Nut. So Edward on that time had no options. He was completely in danger. So he ran towards the Duke of Normandy, obviously his grandfather. So Edward went to his grandfather, the Duke of Normandy, known as Richard. He stayed there for 20 to 25 years. So obviously he had the English throne. At the same time, he had the claim over the Duke Dom of Normandy, the Duchy of Normandy. At the same time, he had the potential. He had the claim over the French throne. So Edward is now connected in three ways. And from Emma and Nat, both of them are now married and they are living a satisfactory life. And from Emma and Nat came two sons. One is Harold Harefoot, second is Half Nat. These were the two sons that from Emma and Nat we are having. So you can say Harold Harefoot at the same time Half Nat. These two were the half brother of Edward. So after the death of Nat, then came the Harold Harefoot. He also died and came the Half Nat in the English throne. But Hardnath on that time were not able to manage all the pressures that he was confronting on that time. So Hardnath is now the king of England because his father not was the king of England. So obviously it is related. And on that time, Edward also plotting to come back England in order to reclaim his throne. The throne of his father. That his father was dethroned by the half-brother's father's father. Getting my point? So... His half-brother's father's father dethroned Edward's father. So he must reclaim the position that was rightfully his. So this was the entire idea. And on the time, Hartnard, he was so stupid, he invited Edward, the half-brother of Hartnard, in order to rule all over the England together. So Hartnard was going to rule England. At the same time, Edward must be there to assist Hartnard. Within one year, when Edward was invited, just count one year. Within one year, Hartnut died. Hartnut went to a banquet hall. He was drinking and eating and all of a sudden he fall and he died. You can say it was kind of a heart attack. But at the same time, there can be many conjectures. He had been killed by his own half-brother Edward. And now Edward became the king of England. He had the claim over the Duke of Normandy. At the same time, he had the claim over the French throne. This is the first idea. Now the complexities are now going to be solved. So Edward on that time was married to Edith, E-D-I-T-H. Edith was one of the powerful women on that time because her father was Godwin, G-O-D-W-I-N. One of the powerful person after the king on that time you can say. So first it was Edward, the king of England. Then we have Godwin. One of the powerful figures in English people, according to the English people, according to the English historian. So Godwin had one daughter, one son. The daughter, Edith, was married to the king of England known as Edward. So Edward and Edith, both are now married. But at the same time, as I have said, that one son, one daughter. The, who was the son on that time? Obviously, Harold Godwinson, H-A-R-O-L-D-G-O-D-W-I-N-S-O-N. So Godwin had one daughter, one child. The son was Harold Godwinson and the daughter was Edith. 
Edith was married to the king of England, obviously Edward. And Edward had the connection, Edward had the claim over the duchy of Normandy over the French throne. This is now the connection, so three ways you can say. But at the same time, Edward and Edith, they were having to an extent great life, but they had no children. So who was going to be the king of England? On that time, there was a, in old English literature, there was a council known as Witton, possibly W-I-T-O-N. I am going to insert the name here. So, Edward, without any son, died. Who is going to be the king of England? Obviously, English people must decide that who is going to be the king of England, right? They are not going to accept a French person came in England and claimed the throne. So, they did the right things. They went for the most powerful lineage, obviously, Harold Godwinson. Harold Godwinson was the brother-in-law of Edward, the King of England. So Harold Godwinson became the King of England. These news that Edward died and Harold Godwinson became the King of England, elected by the Parliament, went to William the Conqueror. On that time, Edward was ruling the England and William the Conqueror was the Duke of Normandy. Both of them were friends. And when William the Conqueror got the news that Harold became the King of England, he was astonished as well as completely raged. He was angry. He wanted to possess the English throne. It was written by historian that Edward said to William the Conqueror, his friend, that after my death, you could be the king of England. So this was the idea of William the Conqueror that my friend said that I could be the king of England. So obviously, I have the claim over the English throne. If I am the king of England and if you are my friend, if I have no son, no daughter, then I am saying to you, you know, after my death, you can be the king of England. This is what I said according to you. So I am dead now and now you are coming in order to claim the English throne. But obviously, Harold on that time was the king. So both of them fought. In 1066 AD, William the Conqueror defeated Harold Godwinson and became the king of England as well as he was the Duke of Normandy and the date must be clear in your mind it was in 1066 AD that the battle of Hastings was fought and William became the king of England so this is the history of the battle of Hastings from Roman Empire to the battle of Hastings from Roman Empire to the Norman conquest we all have now the ideas in our mind quite clear so if you have liked that video, subscribe to our channel, share with your friends and click the like icon. If you have any questions regarding anything, go to the comment section and write the things down. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.